Jang Ho Un showed a complacent expression, clenched his sword and began cursing at the insect that should crawl on the ground. Before he finished speaking, Jang Ho Un launched a kick to finish off Si Hun, but knowing this guy's bad manners, Tae Su promptly appeared with his shield. Unable to cut his younger brother Jang Ho Un, he instead repeatedly poked his sword into Tae Su's thick shield, enough to make him brace himself to defend. Tesu gritted his teeth in response to what Jang Ho An had said just now. I don't know what your relationship is with Si Hun. His foot stomped on the ground and eloquently declared, as long as Kong Tesu is alive, don't try to bully Si Hun. Finishing his sentence, he used all his strength to push Jang Ho An back, away from Si Hun. Tesu gritted his teeth, tensed his ass muscles, and felt the other side but there was no resistance at all. As soon as he raised his head, he saw the god Jang Ho unwrapped in a thin ball of electronic structure, laughing with his mouth open and laughing at the rudimentary equipment of his time as a predator. In that hole there was no way to compare with absolute defense. Mine. Jang Ho unwisely smirked, activated his magic power and threw Tae Su into the sky, temporarily eliminating a guy who was blocking his way. Glancing cunningly behind, Jang Ho un mumbled that there was no need to fight. Just wait until I take care of my little brother Si Hun but I'll come and settle the matter with you. Thanks to a few minutes of interference from Tae Su, Sela was able to reach Si Hun in time and cast a recovery spell on him. To turn the tide, Si Hun used all his strength to swing his sword and use a double-minded move to rush towards Jang Ho An. The ultimate killing move releases countless storms of glowing jade-colored halberds that flow mana into the blade. At this moment, he just wanted to trample Jang Ho on under his feet. Then he jumped up with his sword raised high, shouting loudly for the wind dragon to appear. The fifth move creates the image of a dragon god behind blowing wind and flipping objects in the air in exchange for a lucky wink from the young man. He immediately reached out to block Si Hun's attack, trying his best to suppress it. No matter how well equipped he is. Jang Ho Un still has to put in all his strength to block Si Hun's slashing sword. Seeing that the slashing technique was getting deeper and deeper, Jang Ho Un tensed up a bit and was thrown into a nearby cliff. The fifth form of the wind dragon sword consumed most of Si Hun's strength, he had to lower the sword and panted. But before he could recover, he heard the damn young master's deceitful laughter. On the other side, Jang Ho Un now adjusted his protective armor and kicked Tesu away making fun of Si Hun because he came from a lowly background so he didn't want to lose easily, right? Because for Jang Ho An, Si Hun's superiority in every aspect is like a thorn in his subconscious. From studying, playing sports to his ability as a player, he is far behind Si Hun. But now Jang Ho An thinks differently, as long as he has money and power, he can control people. This time is a good opportunity for him to eliminate his younger brother who always surpasses him easily. As soon as the words ended, the process of absorbing and copying Si Hun's dual world move from earlier had just finished. It turns out that all this time this brat has been talking nonsense to prolong the time to absorb all the abilities plus using moves to copy Si Hun's moves. It's okay, he counterattacked with great speed, rushing directly at Si Hun, leaving him unable to react. The fifth hidden dragon super consciousness sword technique. The wind dragon appeared, but now it was Jang Ho An and it dived back towards him. His face had a distorted smile that made it hard to see his human form, enjoying the prospect of his younger brother being betrayed by his own attack. Si Han tried his best to put his sword out to block. Seeing the light emanating from the collision of the two swords, he frowned. Jang Ho An waved his hand with his superior sword sending Si Hun flying into the cliff on the other side. He grinned when he saw Sela trying to heal her wounds because Si Hun had no armor to block the attack just now. Jang Ho An's mouth still kept moving, continuously screaming happily, This is the difference between you and me. Do you understand? Unbi raised the orb to launch the lightning spear and hit the young master, but could only collide with his protective orb. And Jang Ho An stood inside without damaging a hair smiling happily, look at Si Hun. No matter how hard you try like crazy, you will never be able to surpass me. Sela quickly shook Si Hun. She told him that she could only give first aid and not prolong the treatment because she had to help Wenbi. 
Si Hun's tired eyes could only slightly open helplessly, hearing Sela's voice telling him to try to wake up so she could go help Wenbi. He knew he had to get up but his body didn't have any strength at all. Could he just come here? When I was determined to take revenge on those who abandoned my mother and me, but now I can't even protect the people I love who are fighting for me. Is it to blame for being too weak? Si Hun thought about it, biting his lips in frustration. Then suddenly his eyes opened wide. Did he have to have strength? From now on, everyone stood aside, watching the drama for a long time, thinking about what the young master's words meant. For the time being, Kong Ji Yu can be sure that this group of Mia is a group of people hiding in hiding so that they can't get anywhere to do things related to the demon religion. But he didn't expect Si Hun to actually be the one holding the tragic dog blood script in the legend. When finding out information about preparing a plan to write a dirty script, Kong Ji Yu suddenly realized that the guy looked so much like Si Hun, thinking he was handsome or similar. It turned out both of them had the same father. The speculation is over and there is enough information to take action. Kong Ji Yu warmed up his muscles and prepared to appear to save his four dumbbells. But suddenly Si Hun's scream rang out below, causing Kong Ji Yu to stop for about two seconds. Below, Si Hun stood up with a fierce blast of energy thrown up from under his body. The light all over his body gathered into the shape of a green dragon opening its majestic mouth behind him. Seeing Si Hun roar. I need strength to protect the person I love. Kong Ji Yu realized he had awakened his inner strength at the right moment, just like the movie. Because Kong Ji Yu had bound Si Hun to him, he also knew about the advanced sword techniques he had just acquired from his awakening. Oh that's it, let Si Hun take the main character's script the right way because he can't stand seeing the person he loves being harmed and make a breakthrough. Si Hun's dragon lifted him up to fight at the level of his trash brother who didn't understand what was going on, and could only try to use his hands to block the consecutive sword strikes. Right above his right shoulder, he cut off his armor and blood flowed out, scaring Jiang Ho onto death. This guy is so strong that he's armed to the teeth but still can't stop him. Unwilling, Jiang Ho on pushed the sword back towards Si Hun who was performing the fifth super consciousness hidden dragon sword technique. Then, adding the chaos of clouds, completely shaping the energy dragon, both long and ferocious, chasing after the place where the two brothers fought endlessly. Having control equipment to protect against enemies, Jiang Ho An also had to use all his strength to barely block the onslaught of attacks coming towards him. Both Si Hun's strength and speed have since overwhelmed the Mir group's extremely high technology. When Si Hun came close to give him a blow, Jiang Ho An was startled to realize that he had no ability to control such a person. But to confirm Jiang Ho An's thoughts, Si Hun chopped his other shoulder, causing him to retreat in panic and have to quickly pull off his armor. But that technology couldn't take shape in time before the blade stabbed Jiang Ho An's face. He thought he was about to die when the big bodyguard jumped out and used his half shield, half axe to block him immediately. He struggled to push the axe handle blocking Si Hun's attack and also sending him flying like using a crowbar to hit a cockroach. Even though he was a guardian, the bodyguard Qian Maru Go was still scolded and slapped by Jiang Ho An for his slow behavior, scaring him and almost making his heart burst out. Si Hun leaned down on his sword and let out a few tired breaths as the system continuously warned that the wound would become serious if he did not quickly heal it. But Si Hun didn't want to think about it anymore. In his mind he was wondering about how good this bodyguard's sword power was. Currently, Si Hun faced the giant monster in front of him that was actually like an ant lost in a group. His face was filled with tension, knowing clearly that he was no match for this person. Qian Maru Go stood loomed in front of Si Hun and said simply but with clear murderous intent, Do you mind if I use one of your arms to please the vice president? Maru Go, a couple, stood in front of Si Hun who was holding his body in pain, and reminded him that if he was reasonable, we would ask for an arm, or else we would stay here on the mat. His arrogant words made Si Hun filled with indignation, so angry that he cursed. He had a beautiful face but had a limited mindset. He seemed like he was stupid or something to agree. Immediately, the giant performed a great move. Body, using his 20 years of muscle training to crush Si Hun under his feet, he, just like Jiang Ho Hn, 
constantly looked down on him, even emphasizing that the only right of the weak is to suffer. Painful. Si Hun gritted his teeth to suppress the pain. His body no longer had any strength left. Did he have to give up everything now? Are you like when you were a child, as an illegitimate child? Si Hun could only receive the hatred of his biological father, had to purse his lips in pity to console himself and his unfortunate mother? Question mark. Even when he was mercilessly beaten down by life, Si Hun never once complained about being born into this world but always believed that one day he would be able to protect everyone. No matter what now, he can only watch his teammates die with him. Si Hun's eyes filled with tears as he looked at Tetsu, Sela, and Wunbi. I'm sorry for not being able to help everyone. As soon as the words ended, the axe fell. Si Hun closed his eyes and prepared to let go of everything. But Si Hun is an idol who just debuted with Kangu. How can he sleep so easily? Kangu appeared in the 89th minute, with a cool appearance like a god, making it impossible for his nearly lost brother to lie on the ground to regain his senses in time. It's a bit early to deny, wake up and watch your performance. With one hand, Kangu held the giant hammer and axe with a gentle force like playing a toy. What did this bastard bully his juniors say about the weak's right to suffer, right? Just like that, he thought so too. Chien Go frowned, tensed all his facial muscles to withstand Kangu's fierce pressure from above, then quickly landed on his mouth. A dog's mouth can't grow elephant tusks, so don't bark nonsense. When he bumps into this Kangu, he will definitely be killed. Kangu's eyes sparkle with evil, declaring that he will let the butcher know what the rights of the weak really are. Kangu, Si Hun called his name weakly, asking why did he appear here? Of course, he couldn't admit that he was the one who made Si Hun eat so much, so Kangu immediately put on a harmless look and said he would explain everything later. Thanks to the shining aura of the male lead Si Hun and the guarantee of the Buddhas of the Ten Directions, specifically Kangu, his teammates were able to carry Si Hun for treatment. As soon as the bodyguard Qian Go got up, he immediately asked Kangu if he was a member of the Hua Jiang army. So why did the Hua Jiang team come here alone? If you hit him then jump in and hit him, it's tiring just standing around talking nonsense all the time. These words made Qian Go grit her teeth and firmly grasp the hammer in her hand, wanting to punish the arrogant black-haired guy. Unexpectedly, Kangu could block his full power attack with just one hand. Blue Go sweat dropped when he heard Kangu open his mouth to speak with a strange and horror expression on his face. As you said, it's the weak's right to suffer, so come claim your rights. Blue Go tried to move the weapon, but it was in Kangu's hand like it was stuck to glue and the dog couldn't move as he wanted. Blue Ngo's eyes collided with Kangu's strange, smiling face. Confused and not knowing what to do, Jiang Hoan, who was hiding in the cliff, shouted loudly. Demon weapon. Use the demon weapon Chi and Blue Go both knew that once the bodyguard used the demon weapon, he would die with no way back. So Jiang Ho Ho kept ordering and urging him to sacrifice for Mia's association. The big guy was willing to obey, dropping the axe and reaching out to touch the outer layer of his jacket to obey. His large hand suddenly became veiny when Blue Go tightly grasped the chest of his shirt. The whole body exuded a magical aura like sizzling smoke before Kangu's interesting eyes. He let out a scream as he completely transformed full of fangs and claws, then let out a fierce roar of authority. The shape is no different from the demons in hell, plus strange and terrifying wings that leave no trace of humanity. Jiang Ho Ho, hiding in the cliff, laughed loudly and shouted self-praise and ordered the monster to quickly take care of the arrogant guy in front of him. That bad boy Jiang Ho Ho was hanging on the cliffside, scolding Kangu mercilessly and shouting loudly that I would never repay him. In Kangu's eyes right now, who is this grotesque monster with claws and fangs? A low-class fake like you can't even compare with any of your disciples in hell. Kangu activated his steel power and accumulated his heavenly power to launch a punch that made a horse like him roll his eyes and vomited blood in the first round. Even though it's a fake, he's the most evil person he's ever met, so it's best to send him home to be taught by his grandparents as soon as possible. Jiang Ho O's face turned as green as a frog's ass after witnessing the bodyguard's feet go cold with just one punch. Is this guy actually a ranker? 
Kangu continued looking at Jiang Hoo with a smile that couldn't have been more saintly. Wow, you want to use magic power to scare me again. Congratulations to the vice president, you missed your turn in the box. If you can run 36 times, then run right away, but Jiang Hoan doesn't think he can run far. So he quickly pulled out the communication ball from his pocket and wanted to connect with his wealthy father and send out an SOS signal. But wait, where did the baby run to? Kangu's voice whispered in his ear, startling him and before he could react, he took a single kick and lay flat on his back. Humiliation filled the boy's eyes. He was about to stand up and scold Kangu when he received another kick on the head. Wake up and see whose playground this is now. You have to be afraid to be able to talk properly. Does the demonic cult teach you like that? Kangu glanced at the ball that Jiang Ho on held tightly in his hand and then his evil eyes flashed. If you want to contact your father, go ahead. I'll invite you. On this side, when Kim Jae-yun had just received the signal from his son's orb, Kangu offered a courtesy greeting that he was holding his son as a hostage. When he heard Jiang Ho on sobbing, this old father was a little disturbed but remained silent and did not respond. Kangu on this side just punched Jiang Ho Oh so he could continue calling for help. He also used his voice to blame Jiang Ho Oh, who was still in puberty, or why he was stubborn and disobedient, and then scolded the old man, who had only one son and didn't raise him up properly. After punching for a while, Kim Jae-yun spoke up before Kangu temporarily stopped. Kangu's beloved son, holding a golden halberd, was locked and locked on the ground by Kangu's power. His face was covered in blood. His condition was so bad that it made my heart warm like the sun. As soon as he heard the question, what do you want, Kangu said that he wanted to save his son, so he entered the sea level gate at Mark Gong alone to discuss. As soon as he finished speaking, he laughed out loud, knowing that the cunning and cunning old fox would not listen to him simply to save his son. Kangu pulled the chain to make his son moan, with a teasing and provocative tone that terrified Kim Jae-yun and couldn't believe his ears. The old man asked Kangu why he dared to do that to him, saying that he did not know what the consequences would be if the government-affiliated army did this kind of thing. Oh so he thought he was a government man. Kangu impatiently corrected that he was a furry lancer and didn't have a family, so he had to go alone. What a strange question. Kangu's attitude got so bad that Kim Jae-yun could not contain his anger and stood up, his hair flying everywhere. Do you know who I am to dare talk like that? I was so crazy that I heard the other party ask in a bland voice, what's wrong? I have to know, so do you know who I am? If you know, you'll be injured. If you don't know, you'll be punished. Inferred, he decided to massage his son first to get acquainted, and no longer had to hold back when dealing with the parents of this stubborn kid Jiang Hoan. Kangu placed the signal ball under Jiang Hoan's forehead so that the other person on the other side could hear the moaning more clearly. Sure enough, when Jae Yun couldn't bear it and agreed, he agreed to be there for 20 minutes to exchange the hostages. If his old father doesn't show up, he'll get back just a belt, not his son. Boy, I don't know who you are or what you want, but if you're blackmailing, don't bother. But regret it. On the other side, Jae Yun was furious, creating a fiery aura around his body, and said in a harsh voice, No matter where you are, I will find you and tear you into a hundred pieces. Is that so, good luck old man? He said then he hit his son's head to break the connecting rod. After being trampled to pieces, the previously arrogant Jang Ho on became very reasonable. He tried to move his swollen face and kept begging Kong Ji Yu to spare his life, even promising to repay him. Gave Kong Ji Yu a lot of money. Money is nice. Kong Ji Yu used his foot to turn the kettle over, gently declaring that he was not acting for money. Jang Ho on tried to open his eyes, swollen with tears, asking him what he wanted. What he wants is simply kimchi stew and world peace. This strange ideal made Jang Ho on immediately open his mouth. The reporter who scolded him was clearly just insulting him because there is no one who doesn't like money, and the consequences of those flat-brained, loud-mouthed people are a lesson. Broken heart and slapped straight in the face. It seemed that this mixed beak was harming his body, so Jang Ho on was scared and asked to shut up immediately. When he heard Kong Ji Yu say that he only wanted to meet his beloved father, 
he opened his eyes and secretly rejoiced. If only he could meet his father, this guy would surely die. But suddenly Kong Gu's mouth curled into a devilish smile, and something purple hung down on his face, making Jang Ho An's eyes widen. It turns out that the hair on the horse whore demon due to Kong Gu's power of fear welcomes his beloved son Jang Ho On to the endless plains. He enjoys taking advantage of the person he loves so much. How simple is this? Kong Ji Yu then walked out of the C-rank gate with his group, enthusiastically telling his younger siblings, when Che Eun Jo appeared with her usual frowning face, constantly complaining that Kong Ji Yu suddenly changed. Losing my mother sucks. This caused her to mobilize Park Wa Um to save the day, but somehow she found him still as strong as an ox. The appearance of golden faces in the heart of power made Tia E Su confused, thinking he had done something illegal. Of course Kong Ji Yu tells him to cut down on the drama because they are all his acquaintances. Seeing a strange pink figure next to Kong Ji Yu, Che Eun Jo immediately walked in front of Sela, looked from top to bottom, then frowned and crossed his arms as if he had some grudge against her. Sela is wary when Eun Jo asks what relationship she and Kong Ji Yu have. Normally she is a gentle girl, but when she saw that the red hair was hostile towards her and flirting with Kong Ji Yu, Sela was ready to respond. What time are you talking nonsense? He turned his head back and told everyone to disperse and recuperate. Park Wa Hoon didn't care who was his girlfriend, so she asked Kong Ji Yu who he was dragging alive on the ground. Who else is there other than Kim Ji Young Ho Oh? He looks bruised but he can still breathe well. The government people stood there rubbing their faces for a while before seeing the identity of the young man from Mia Electronics Corporation. It's crazy, making his son look this beautiful. Kim Jae Yun will definitely fight to the end. Eun Jo exhaled, but has it turned from looking for evil sects into a full scale war between guilds? Captain Wa Jiang has brought human resources, but to fight on such a scale, now is not the time. She walks up to Kong Ji Yu and asks, Isn't it too early to start a fight? Looking at the boy with his face on the ground, Kong Ji Yu told Wa Eun not to worry, after all, he came because he loved his child endlessly. He was so touched that he used his foot to nudge the boy to see if he was still alive. The red-haired man didn't trust him very much. Old man Jay Hyon was not a pushy person. Just because of his son, he lost his temper and accepted the disadvantage to let the other person dictate terms, which was not the way he usually did. What in the world can't happen? Kong Ji Yu feels it's so annoying to explain. Just wait and see and you'll know why you're wondering so much. At this moment, the appearance of a convoy of supercars caused both Hua Eun and Eun Jo to simultaneously raise their defenses. As expected, Kim Jae Hyun stepped down from the car with anger. Moreover, seeing two girls in front of him as accomplices of the person who kidnapped his son, he became even more crazy. His trembling fingers wanted to rush over and strangle them both to death at the same time. He burst into a threatening force and asked in a low voice who took my son. When asked, someone replied, Here, here, here. Jay Hyon looked over and saw a young man dragging someone on the ground. Who else but his unfortunate obedient son? Jay Hyon clenched his teeth as he was about to come and get his son back. Jiang Ho Oh was thrown straight forward by Kong Ji Yu without him coming to claim him. The kettle fell straight into the hands of two bodyguards who kept calling, but did not hear a single moan. Even Jay Hyon was surprised. Not to mention the other two girls didn't understand why Kong Ji Yu returned his son so easily. Kim Jae Hyun did not believe that everything was so simple. He harshly asked Kong Gu's purpose, but he kindly reminded him to ask about his son a little. Isn't he very worried about his piece of gold? Such a superficial greeting makes you sad. Kim Jae Hyun then kept calling Jiang Ho Oh's name but once, twice, say something Jiang Ho Oh, what the hell are you saying? For every question he asked his son, every time Kong Gu's smile widened a little, the old man grabbed his son's shoulders, shook him violently, then held his face close, wanting him to say something to him. The first thing that entered his eyes was the image of his son with only four teeth. Then Jiang Ho Wan trembled and asked him, Uncle, who are you? Oh, it sounded like a thunderbolt. Kim Jae Hyun frantically grabbed his son's shoulder and emphasized that I was your father. 
but at that moment he couldn't remember anything anymore. His mind was full of images and words. The echo from the hell that Kong Ji Yu was hiding in. Jiang Hoan right now is like an idiot who keeps calling for help. Even the concern of his father Kim Jae Hyun makes him scared to shit his pants. Discovering that his son did not realize that he had directly caused Kim Jae Hyun's anger to turn into a rage, he immediately unleashed all his strength and rushed to attack Kong Ji Yu like a beast that has lost its reason. Kong Ji Yu just stood there, ready to go do business with him, but Eun Jo screamed, Leave it to me, he's my prey. To avenge his comrades who were killed by the evil cult, Che Eun Jo wanted to personally take down the bastard who sold his soul to the devil. On this side, Kim Jae Hyun released a furious murderous aura, screaming who had harmed his son. That power sparked fire, causing the surrounding guards to drift away. Oh, there's about to be a super epic battle. Kong Ji Yu calmly stood aside and waited to see the fight between powerful rankers officially begin. Eun Jo raised her hand to summon a ring of power to form something like a fist that covered her arm, then kicked the ground and rushed forward. On one side is the old ranker Kim Jae Hyun with the level 9 awakening characteristic using the power to strengthen the river's energy, on the other side is the young female ranker Che Eun Jo using the legendary bloodthirsty air tank to create a net to avoid the river. Battle. If you think the red haired girl won, comment red and if you think the old man won, leave a white comment to let Tom know. Confronted with Che Eun Jo's black blood barrier, Kim Jae Hyun did not flinch at all, activating his superpower to strike a fireball-like attack and then screaming, getting out of the way and wanting to move towards Kong Ji Yu Opa. But this little girl was annoying and bothered him constantly. The yellow energy collided with the brightly flashing blood chains, causing them to break into several pieces. Taking advantage of the situation, Eun Jo accelerated the speed of diving down while her hands swung the chain fists in the air like a strip of silk to encircle all four sides, then tied Kim Jae Hyun tightly like a piece of crispy fried meat. I'm sorry, please bring these three ropes back for the children to practice jumping rope. Kim Jae Hyun tensed up twelve rows of powerful chest muscles and the chain broke. Eun Jo watched nervously as the old man screamed three pieces of broken jewelry. Look at my suffering. From where Jay Hyun stood, a stream of power plowed the ground, causing Eun Jo to jump high. The old man standing below roared, Don't you dare get in the way. One hand clenched into a powerful yellow fist and was about to punch Eun Jo when team leader Park Wa Eun rushed up to join him. Her white eyes used the wind to slash a path, creating a tornado that shot out countless wind blades, cutting countless lines on Jay Hyun's body, leaving him visibly ragged. Losing his clothes and revealing slash wounds, Jay Hyun panted and became even more hysterical as he cursed the group of people in front of him. And behind those two girls was the guy with a strange smile as if he knew everything in advance, only to anger Jay Hyun further. He raised his arms like a chimpanzee, roaring I told you to get out of the way. Then he pounded the ground and continued his great move to smash everything. Walloon couldn't avoid it in time, and took another attack releasing lightning just like Pikachu releasing electricity. Kim Jae Hyun rushed towards Kong Ji Yu looking like an animal, but Eun Jo jumped in the way with another bloody squirt in her hand. I told you to get lost, but why do you keep getting in the way? Eun Jo did not stop in front of the old man's roar, continuing to jump with the chains being thrown towards the old man, piercing through his body. But Jae Hyun didn't stop and just kept running towards the girl flicking Che Eun Jo into the sky like snapping an ant that was blocking her way. Simply being knocked away by a tan nature made Che Eun Jo feel angry, plus he endured the attack and let the chains pierce his body, continuing to use the black blood chains again. Eun Jo came from behind, wrapped tightly around Kim Jae Hyun like green bean tacos, then pulled him towards her to hold him back. Because Eun Jo believes that no matter how strong Jae Hyun is, he is still just a tanker. If he keeps causing damage, he will soon reach his limit. Jay Hyun braced herself while cursing nonsense, but Wa Woon thought the same as her red-haired friend so she struggled to get up, leaning on her sword. Just one fatal blow is enough. While Jay Hyun was still struggling fiercely with the chains, Eun Jo suddenly lost her momentum and retreated backwards. 
The old man, covered in injuries, tore off all the blood chains and roared loudly like an escaped chimpanzee. Grabbing the tip of a chain that hit him earlier and panting heavily, Jay Hyone decisively pulled out all of them, dropped them on the ground and opened his mouth to curse Kong Ji Yu. He didn't curse back, instead he gave a strange, contemptuous smile, causing Jay Hyon to go crazy and rush towards Kong Ji Yu like an animal. As soon as he swung his fist a little away from Kong Ji Yu, he was just a little closer to touching the insolent bastard. Unfortunately, fate was not enough. He roared in anger to the point of vomiting blood. Did he have a cramp while punching and kicking, or something, dad? Oh no, it turned out that Park Wa-Oon's long sword had pierced Kim Jae Hyun's ribs from an opening behind her back. With this blow, Wa-Oon was completely out of breath, but it was enough to make the crowd out there scream, fearing that the battle had come to an end and the one who was defeated was their president. Wa-Oon pulled out the sword, causing blood to splatter, causing him to collapse to the ground, panting and exhausted. At this point, if he still wanted to go, he didn't care, neither Wa-Oon nor Oon Jo stopped him anymore, just stood there watching Jay Hyon step by step towards his Opa Kong Ji Yu, he had really overcome it. Many difficulties to reach that destination. This extraordinary determination and will is admirable and commendable, but in terms of motivation and morality, he deserves more punishment. Finally, Kim Jae Hyon stopped and weakly punched Kong Ji Yu with his fist then slowly collapsed miserably. Kong Ji Yu grabbed Kim Jae Hyon's hair, his red eyes filled with pity. His desperate struggle made him unable to hide a smile. Kong Ji Yu bent down to repeat the question he asked when communicating through the sphere. Do you know who your father is? A moment later at the headquarters of the Wa Jiang army, in an unmonitored hallway, Che Eun Jo asks Kong Ji Yu to explain how he made Jiang Ho on insane. Hearing him say that she could adjust memories, Eun Jo was confused about whether she could even have this kind of ability. Kong Ji Yu did not explain clearly, just said that he was multi-talented, and slowly opened his eyes. Stop it, this is not a matter of talent, who are you actually, Kong Ji Yu? Slowly placing a friendly hand on her shoulder, Kong Ji Yu softly said that she didn't need to know everything and she also didn't need to understand everything. Instead, Che Eun Jo just needs to prove that she will support him wholeheartedly and of course he will support her with all his might in rooting out the demonic bastards. Those who took everything precious from her, isn't that enough? So let's continue this mutually beneficial cooperation. This kind of uncompromising murderous intent left Eun Jo with no choice but to breathe in sweat after Kong Gu's whisper in her ear. She thought to herself that she should not have raised this tiger cub. Oh, Tom has a little correction. This guy is not a tiger cub. This guy is a demon king who just crawled up from hell. Now there is only regret but there is no way to save it. Eun Jo had no choice but to force her hand to tighten the friendship with Kong Ji Yu. This time, she understood clearly that this game, whether it was her or the Wa Jiang army, could no longer regret it. Once the gears of fate have begun, even if the person in front of them is the devil, this deal is too late to turn back. Having said that, it must be said again that it's all because Kong Gu's acting is so great that outsiders look at him and think he's caught a bad guy, who would have thought? Because don't look at the face to get an image, just look at it like that, but you still don't know who is the chicken and who is the rice. In the interrogation room, after being chanted and wrapped like a cocoon by magicians from the hall, Kim J. Hyon is currently facing Wa Un's interrogation about what the evil cult wants to summon. But he just smirked and smiled contemptuously. Immediately Wa Un slapped the table to warn Jay Hyon that he was no longer the CEO of Mia Electronics Group or the head of Mia's association. Now he's just a criminal who cooperated with a bunch of crazy cultists. What the hell, do you think I'm going to tell you everything? No matter how much power the Wa Jiang group has, you guys are still just dirty dogs of the government, loyal bastards doing barbarism for them. Tom thought he should clamp his mixed beak and then charge it to gloat, because the beak was too mixed. Team leader Wa Woon was furious, but because he was carrying out his mission, he couldn't do anything to him. With momentum, Jay Hyon continued to explode that many of her council members had been in contact with him. According to the transitive nature, he is also Wa Woon's owner, 
so how dare he show his teeth towards the owner? Does your mother like to talk? Jay Hyon was so angry that he threw blood at the old man, wishing he could squeeze Jay Hyon's tacos so hard that they would be crushed. She shouted to question Kim Jay Hyon, but this stubborn old man, other than growling and complaining in pain, could not utter any human like words. Then keep beating him, bastard. Che Eun Jo tightened his grip on the chain and hit him like a punching bag. The act of harming the witness caused Wa Hoon to stop her immediately. After all, she couldn't let him die now. Wa Hoon's words made him laugh triumphantly. In the end, you all lost. What the hell do you brats understand? Do you understand how big they are? Have you planned anything? You can't even imagine how big you are, even if you drink a few cartons of milk. At this time, Kong Ji Yu appeared with a calm appearance. Both of them struggled in the battle, so let him investigate Kim Jae Hyon on their behalf. Of course, this made Kim Jae Hyon despise him. He swore that he would not say a word, especially to the bastard who touched his son. But as soon as he heard Kong Ji Yu say he would bring that guy back intact as before, Jae Hyon was shocked and immediately lost his careless expression. Kong Ji Yu smiled devilishly, looking down at Jae Hyon, mumbling, Say it. Say it. Don't be shy, saying everything he knew about the Ghost Association. The pressure made Kim J. Hyon feel extremely torn inside. He bent down and struggled mentally for a long time. The sound of rapid breathing mixed with the sound of grinding teeth was just like a clown show in Kong Gu's eyes. The other two girls stood still when they saw the strange expression. Then his eyes widened and he cursed Kong Ji Yu to hell. Who would have thought that this would be so normal for him because he had just crawled up from down there? In the end, to save the reporter Jiang Ho An, Kim Jae Hyon agreed to tell the truth. He said he met a man from the ghost group about eight months ago. The man had a bloody face but his identity was unknown. Looking at Jae Hyon, I knew he was telling the truth, making Kong Ji Yu feel a little disappointed. That guy is so careful that even someone like Jae Hyon doesn't know who he is. That guy suggested that providing sacrifices for their holiday would turn me into a devil. This sounds ridiculous. Kim J. Hyon is old so he's confused as to how he could agree on the first meeting. The old man immediately replied that she was just a stupid person who didn't know anything about demons. Demons are immortal as long as their necks are intact and their heads are not exploded, they will live forever and not age. Wa Loon didn't rush to judge right away, just asked if he really believed in that. Because they have been around for thousands of years. All three people, including Kong Ji Yu, were surprised and strained their ears to listen. Sometimes evil cults exist thousands of years ago and are constantly expanding their power around the world. Of course, they only became active again in recent years. Kong Ji Yu fell into contemplation. He was wrong to think that the evil cult had only just been established on the day of the disaster, but perhaps they had already taken root or this uprooting would be more difficult than he thought. Ji Hyon did not deny when Eun Jo asked if he had used someone else as a sacrifice for eternal life. But what's the point of a crazy old man craving immortality, to continue being crazy? Kim J. Hyon burst out laughing and scolded Eun Jo for being such a brat. A demon's physical body retains its mind and magnifies desires, so they will never hate life but remain youthful and do everything they like. Isn't that fucking amazing? Eun Jo fell into confusion, feeling herself slowly following the old man's words. But Jay Hyon's eyes were filled with joy. After all, he was a bit crazy in his head, so he lost nothing in betting, it was all or nothing. Kong Wu was not as surprised by the scale of the evil cult as the other two girls. He just vaguely guessed how the demon society was expanding its forces. Thinking about that, Kong Ji Yu suddenly felt a headache because he couldn't believe that there were more stupid people in the world than he thought. Only stupid people think of living with burning enthusiasm. Because unquenchable desire is not good at all, he lived immortally for 10,000 years in hell enough to understand that it was more painful than anything in the world. These core guys don't know anything about demons, but Kong Wu didn't say anything, just silently listened to Kim Jae Yun continue. I provided everything requested by the cult and let several members of Mia's society accept evil energy through rituals. He shares the same demonic energy as Mana but there are differences. 
When she heard that he was the leader of the Mia group but had never received magic power, Un Zhou immediately asked why. It turned out that the guy wearing the blood-colored mask said they needed more time to turn Jae Yun into a devil, because if he accepted it too quickly, he would lose his reason and become a meaningless monster. As for the subordinates, they don't know anything about the shortcomings of that energy. If they see that they are stronger, they just use it. He chuckled when he mentioned that they were like pawns that were used once and then thrown away. Before Un Zhou rushed past him again, Hua Un asked what the evil cult wanted to summon and received the answer that it was a demon. This plan was shelved for thousands of years because the space barrier was too strong, but recently it has weakened significantly and the evil cult has begun to operate strongly again. The proof is that some low-level hellish monsters have been summoned. These were just simple words, but they made Kangu next to him constantly sweat. Is this all my fault? Kangu recalls the moment the drought began to penetrate the earth. At that time, the alarm system detected nuclear cracks are exactly the cracks we were expecting. His return to Earth this time has disrupted the Geyer system. It turned out that the day he thought was the happiest was the day the Earth was very peaceful. Please don't come back. Sitting and listening to Kim jae Yun continue to tell the story of weakness, it only increased and did not decrease. Kangu waited to remember that other tribes had appeared, so soon they could all land here. Internally he was scratching his head, but on the outside he could only pretend to be calm as if he understood the information he had just heard for the first time. Well, out of a hundred raindrops, not a single one falls in the wrong place. Until now the most important thing is still this ghost meeting. He asked where the head of this cult's country was? Is it possible to find that masked guy? He didn't know, he didn't have any clue other than guessing that they were hiding in some mysterious, isolated place and had completed preparations for the summoning ritual. Wait, the more she listened to this old man, the more confused Un Zhou became. So she had to ask, didn't he say he needed more sacrifices? That's why he wanted to capture Si Hun for the summoning ceremony. Receiving a sentence saying she didn't know anything, Un Zhou immediately got angry. The Mia Guild offered an offering and you said you didn't know if it was enough or not? While she was still speaking kindly and wisely, she gave a sincere statement. Kim Jae Yun still calmly said that they were judged by their abilities. Then, as I was told to give a sincere report to this stubborn old man, Un Zhou was about to yell when Kong Ji Yu spoke up. Damn, there is not only one Mia group, but all three remaining groups are involved in the ghost group. To put it bluntly, the ghost group's roots pervade every corner to lure followers to pay tribute to their schemes. They, Kong Ji Yu guessed correctly, inside the ghost society at this time, the cardinal leader sitting at the main conference table with Jae Yun was captured surprisingly easily. At first he thought his ability was this old man is quite formidable. Turning the crystal ball in his hand, he had observed his prey Kim Jae Yun for so long before trusting him to recruit him into the group, but he regretted it. To please, the clansmen announced that they had enough sacrifices from other guilds so the plan would not delay at all. I see, if there weren't enough sacrifices, do you think you would leisurely come here and chat with me? He fell into thought because he couldn't understand why Kim Jae Yun was directly involved in this because of that scoundrel bastard, where did he come from? This look and that devious smile, if I remember correctly, his name is Oh Kong Ji Yu. We have to check this guy carefully. Other than that, the Cardinal Cardinal comfortably put his feet up on the table and listened to his subordinates report that the military support was stable, and the supplies were also available. It was a block of magic stone containing compressed magic power, enough energy to amplify the energy of the user as the leader and complete the desired plan. Furthermore, there were no specific instructions from above. The Cardinal guessed that they wanted him to take care of the rest himself, so he had to move quickly. The plan will proceed as planned and start with El Quiro. The whole crowd eagerly said yes and then left. Oh, I have to say, the Demon Society really educates its subordinates. No one dares to oppose it. After interrogating old man Kim Jae Hyeon, Kong Ji Yu and the others are preparing to take the house home. Eon Jo sighed tiredly because all the effort they had put in now came back to zero, and had to start making an investigation contract with another group. Hua Un changed the subject to another topic, dispelling Un Zhou's bored atmosphere, 
she mentioned the reward that Calm GU was about to receive from the government. The story of tracking down the Mia group and making Jay Hyeon reveal a lot of important information is thanks to Kong Gu's magical math skills, so he is worthy. I like the reward very much, but he said frankly that he hopes it won't be some useless thing like honors or trophies and the like. He's just living there, and even if it was a real house, he wouldn't hang those useless things up. Hey, I'm not an old-fashioned person, old-fashioned gifts like that won't be on the reward list, so rest assured. She will contact him privately to discuss, but she said in advance that the fruit is worth looking forward to, so Kong Ji Yu can just daydream about what he wants. Wow, I like it. Captain Park Wahoon has been so flattered, this reward is really worth looking forward to. As soon as they arrived home, Sela and S. Iona greeted them at the door. X. Iona suddenly burst into tears as she called out to owner Kong Ji Yu, Where have you gone? He was confused and didn't know how to explain. He just said he needed to take care of a few things and it was inconvenient to bring the child with him. With the momentum of X. Iona's tears, she walked step by step to Kong Ji Yu crying pitifully. I didn't do anything wrong, right? If there's anything wrong, just say it, don't leave it alone. Kong Ji Yu came closer to comfort it. If he hadn't adopted this girl, he would have thought it was a puppy. Having to tell him that I would never abandon him, the little girl immediately jumped into his arms and hugged him. Kong Ji Yu really felt guilty, blaming himself that she was just a child who had just overcome loneliness, yet he couldn't take care of her for a whole week. Sela witnessed the passionate love scene and was also moved but asked permission to interrupt so Kong Ji Yu could enter the house. Kong Ji Yu held ex Iona in his arms. She was still sobbing, looking just like a child sulking at her father coming home from a long business trip. Having such a warm moment in life is considered satisfying. Sela hesitated and said that it would be fine to tell you anything later, since Kong Ji Yu had probably just hidden it because he cared about them. Oh my god, this gentleness makes Kong Ji Yu feel a lot of guilt. To end this awkward atmosphere, Sela invited him to dinner with the kimchi stew she had made for him. When Kong Ji Yu heard the kimchi stew, his eyes lit up and all his fatigue disappeared. Looking at the luxurious pot of kimchi, Sela is truly a kimchi angel sent to reward him. The next day, the whole team gathered to visit Si Hun at the hospital. This scene is like two families. One side is the friend's house including Tetsu and Eun Bai. The other side is the small family of three people Kong Ji Yu, Sela and baby X Iona. The little girl seemed to be following her parents to visit her uncle, so she innocently picked up the biscuits to eat so the adults could talk. From what happened, Si Hun was sure that Kong Ji Yu and the others had been watching over and protecting him from the beginning, but he didn't understand where the rumor of an S-level player came from. Kong Ji Yu tried to distract him in another way, saying that there were talented people in the group who would soon reach 10 or 10 hundred, but in his heart he felt extremely guilty. Even though it's true that Si Hun is really good, for the rumors to spread so quickly, if not for him, who else would be here? The atmosphere suddenly became heavy and serious when Sela spoke up as if blaming Kong Ji Yu that he couldn't have given his teammates a warning. I bowed my head to hide my heavy face and began to tell my feelings that I had kept hidden for the past week, knowing that he had many secrets. I also know that this is not the first time Opa has kept a secret from his teammates and I also know that he did it to protect them. But the fact that Kong Ji Yu kept silent and hid like a cat hiding shit made me feel like their relationship was becoming more and more distant, to the point of fear that one day I wouldn't be able to touch Kong Ji Yu anymore. Being upset by her crush, Kong Ji Yu turned on coward mode and immediately apologized, and his apology brought her back to reality. Sela was embarrassed because she accidentally said something like blaming Kong Ji Yu. She was sure he had his own reason for saying something wrong. But Hell Eel, king of flirting Kong Ji Yu said Sela doesn't have to apologize, you have the right to say that because he made his family worry like that. Just these few lines of powder successfully made Sela's cheeks turn red as if she had applied too much powder. He said he couldn't guarantee that these things wouldn't happen, but he would try his best so you wouldn't have to worry in the future. Oh my god, Sela's hand is not okay. Her whole body is not okay. She was really touched by what her crush said. If that was the case, Sela took a deep breath and suddenly stood up, 
filled with determination. If we consider each other as family, please talk more casually with me, like with Unjo. Oh my god, that's what you've been thinking all along. Do you know that Kong Jiu sees that as a real man who talks like a brother? Well, in general, Sela doesn't know, these three people aren't good either, but being a reluctant audience is fine. The three of them chatted like that but the other two hands continued to act in a romantic movie. They touched each other's hands hesitantly, not knowing anymore. Even Kong Gu's face turned red and he hesitantly asked why Sela suddenly wanted to talk to him. Ah well, that's comfortable. Why do you guys feel so comfortable and excited yet someone with puffed cheeks and sulking comes in between the two main characters? X Iona held out the orange and asked the owner to peel it for him and add some vitamin C, so he wouldn't get too excited. Seeing his teammate's family happy, although Si Hun did not want to interrupt, he was forced to break this happy atmosphere because he had something to say. Kong Ji Yu is extremely grateful. Thank you for leading this new story. Si Han wants to know about Kim Jiang Ho An and Kim Jae Yun. Ah about that, rest assured they will be in jail for the rest of their lives so you don't need to worry about them having a chance to get out on bail. What they did was unforgivable, no matter how much money they paid. Mir Electronics Company has also been in turmoil since the incident occurred. In general, everything over there now seems like a helpless mess. Kong Ji Yu then softened his voice and said that he had accidentally learned about Si Hun's situation. Old man Kim Jae Yun had done a trick to make sure he was in debt, but he would soon be properly compensated for the matter. That's it. This matter seemed like a deep secret, so Si Hun remained silent. When Kong Ji Yu said that the government understood Si Hun's mother's illness at home and took her to be treated at a more advanced facility, Si Hun's words of thanks broke out in his throat. Causing grown-up Tae Su and preschool idol Eun Bai to shed happy tears as well. Si Hun said with tears in his eyes that Kong Ji Yu was truly his savior. Si Hun recalls a time ago, the first time he met Kong Ji Yu, it was truly the luckiest moment of his life. Like Tae Su, Si Hun will now consider Kong Ji Yu as a sworn brother and treat him like an older brother. Kong Gu's insides turned upside down. Please don't say such loving words anymore. Si Hun makes him feel so guilty. That's not all, he also said from the bottom of his heart that he would treat Kong Ji Yu like a real brother, making him feel ashamed and not dare to raise his face. Well, let's just accept that we're more like the older brother in the family and get it over with. Then I can finally tell you this seriously. Si Hun's words made the four people who were wondering what happened so damn curious. What kind of earth shattering secret did you dare to hide from us? The rumors are not far away, Si Hun is actually a player with a special ability when he first awakened, named SSS level martial arts defender. Although he has not used that ability yet because he is at a low level, soon he will be able to use the power of martial god Kai Un Tioang. These blatant words made everyone gasp in admiration. Sela exclaimed that no one had ever achieved such a special SSS level ability in their first awakening. Kong Ji Yu had already seen this part for himself, so he was not very excited. But when he heard that the message Si Hun received when he successfully awakened seemed different from everyone else, he immediately stopped. Due to a problem with the Gai Er system, you were chosen to be the guardian, the system said. What Kong Ji Yu sounds like a thunderclap in the sun, even a ranker like Qian Zhou doesn't know anything about the Gai Er system and yet Si Hun was chosen as the guardian? To be more certain, Kong Ji Yu asked what day Si Hun had awakened as a player. And the answer is that May 22nd is also the day of the first meeting between Sela and Kong Ji Yu. So it's certain that the day he returns will also be the day Si Hun awakens as a new player. Si Hun awakens because he is the one who caused the incident to the Gai Er system. The script is exactly the type of hero who saves the world, everyone can easily recognize it. At first, Kong Ji Yu thought this kid had good qualities as a main character, but did not expect Si Hun to be the main character chosen to restore the real Gai Er system. Then, while all of them were proud to be members of the hero team, Kong Ji Yu with his eyes smiled evilly. Come on, what about the male lead? He's already become his subordinate. The gossip stops here. Kong Ji Yu greeted his brother Si Hun, stood up, brushed his butt, and was about to leave when Si Hun grabbed the hem of his shirt. 
This unusually intimate act made Kong Ji Yu startle his mother. What the hell are you looking at me like that? His cheeks were rosy and his eyes sparkled like comets passing through his life, as if Chipu was singing, Please stay. Oh my god, Kong Gu's ears are ringing. His legs are standing as if waiting for his husband. Ex Iona next to him saw that his master wanted to leave and asked to follow. Kong Ji Yu seemed to remember something. Forget it. His subordinates and confidants will be attracted to his master, but will this young man be the same? Kong Ji Yu is sweating profusely from his mother's sweat, his father's sweat. Could it be that he personally wrote the script for this web slinging love story? No, we need to get out of here quickly. I'll leave the meeting to you. Contact me if you need anything, Si Hun. Saying that, Kong Ji Yu, the King Kong user, flew down from the fifth floor of the hospital, leaving behind the loving voice of his younger brother Si Hun. At another gate, a fierce battle took place. The two beasts growled and launched a fierce counterattack against the opponent. On this side, the baby dragon X Iona was using a powerful charm to launch a dark wind attack, releasing a purple mono to seek the sim and salute like a waterfall, causing the two monsters to roar and fight back in pain. Suddenly, the sharp blade of the sword tore through the dust and wind, and the two beasts were suddenly hit and spurted blood. It turned out that Kong Ji Yu used the power of the government to rush forward without warning, throwing X Iona into the air. Kong Ji Yu clenched his fist, and the second sword strike, using the power of the bone vortex, created a whirlwind of ice that rushed toward the beasts. At this time, the system announced that Kong Ji Yu had received the S rank Leviathan skill, like a tiger gaining wings. Kong Ji Yu turned around and launched a new move, and the monsters were growling and baring their fangs and wildly dancing to follow the attack. Kong Gu's blade swung towards the monster's head. Blood spewed out without time to react. The mono flowed like a magic waterfall, sweeping away the monsters traveling through the toilsome region. Sending away the two monsters, Kong Ji Yu received more experience and his level also increased by one. Kong Ji Yu also worked hard to complete the exam this time. He took a breath and read the system notification that his level had reached 50, decoding the sixth awakening, along with an unlocked ability. Wow, he finally reached level 50, it's been really difficult. When you click to view new abilities, you'll see strange question marks, leaving only one sentence. When you reach the limit of extreme ghosts, special abilities will be unlocked. X Iona saw Kong Ji Yu sitting down tiredly and was very worried. She quickly walked over to ask. But Kong Ji Yu is still suppressing the damn system that really knows how to make people bitter yet he still fakes a smile and says it's nothing, baby. Suddenly, the glowing signal ball transmitted to Sela's voice, she contacted him to inform him that the move had been completed and urged him to come home. Sela will go to the address to wait for him first. Her mother moved the house and discovered some old memories, so she will come later. A moment later Kong Ji Yu took Sela and her mother to an apartment in a modern skyscraper. Ex Iona seemed very interested in the new nest. It integrated quickly while Sela still didn't seem to believe that she would be able to stay in this luxurious place. Kong Ji Yu doesn't want her to think too much. Families have to live together, right? He doesn't want to live alone in such a big place. After talking for a while, seeing that Sela was still shy, Kong Ji Yu bluntly said that this house was donated by the Red Rose Association. I mean, that Che Eun Jo bought this whole apartment for Kong Ji Yu. Sela lost her smile, her heart filled with self-pity. Her rival could afford to buy her crush a luxury apartment in the heart of the city like this. I'm so frustrated that I can't deny that her level is very different from mine. The worst part is that her house is right next door. It's so frustrating, poor people like me know what to do, what to do. Sela felt so sorry for herself that she cried a little inside. When ex Iona happily asked Kong Ji Yu about tomorrow's schedule, Sela woke up from the chaos in her mind. The enemy, not knowing how to fight, continued to witness the little dragon showing a shy and hesitant look as if he was about to confess his love and ask Kong Ji Yu to go out tomorrow. Oh, now the external enemy has turned to the internal enemy, from Che Eun Jo to Ex Iona, why does everyone want to approach my crush? Suddenly, Sela was so scared that she screamed and wanted to go with her, at the largest shopping center in Seoul. 
Kong Ji Yu and Sela were delighted with the cute cheese stick appearance of the little dragon when trying on clothes. Looking at Sela happily checking in and taking selfies with ex Iona, she must have completely forgotten her previous concerns. Kong Ji Yu stood next to him like a young father, feeling relieved and secretly happy that their relationship was becoming closer and closer. Because he was worried that ex Iona would have a hard time integrating because she is shy of strangers and only depends on him. Now look, the baby is more intimate and playful with Sela than with him. With Sela by her side, she will definitely adapt to this world soon. But all the fun comes to an end. Just after being cheerful for a few minutes, he now feels bad, sweating so much that he's even more tired than fighting monsters. I think his body is now capable of carrying the weight of the whole world on him. He compliments everything he says she's pretty. Ex Iona says it suits her no matter what she wears, compliments her for fun, and puts it all together. Yet the other two girls still wanted to continue shopping, and in the end, how many more clothes were they planning to buy? Kong Ji Yu finally stood in front of the large food court with his mouth open, not believing he could eat all the dishes there. Looking at his excited reaction, Sola was surprised but sympathetic. Has Kong Ji Yu open never come here to eat? She introduced Kong Ji Yu that this was not a special place, but there was a variety of food for him to choose from. But Kong Ji Yu doesn't even listen to anything else. His mouth was watering right now as he looked at the beauty in front of him, which was red flame fried rice, pork pizza, and all kinds of stewed kimchi soup. Oh my god, he didn't believe such a paradise existed. Having gone through so much fighting monsters and being busy with Si Hun's debut in the ghost hunting plan, he had completely forgotten that the reason for returning to Earth was to have fun and eat real food. Delicious to compensate for 10,000 years of tasting the honey of my thorns. He now has to eat and drink happily. The second child did not bring all the delicious dishes on the menu here. There are also 10 bowls of kimchi soup at all the counters. Oh boss, this is a self-service counter, be polite. The dishes were served on a long table. Anyone looking in would have thought they were having a party. No, it's all yours, it's all Kongu's. He started with kimchi soup as an appetizer. Oh sausage, delicious, I've never eaten a dish that tastes so good. Well, it definitely can't be as good as Sela's kimchi soup because it's a bit lacking in quality, so he thought he'd try to make up for it with quantity. One piece of pizza, two pieces of pizza, Kongu Opa is mixing pizza with kimchi and devouring it deliciously. Sela stood there with her mother's picture, people say it's forbidden to be handsome or ugly, but because he's my crush, I'll accept whatever he eats. Haven't tried it yet, let me see if another guy will let me go immediately. Seeing that Kongu still hadn't stopped his strange and strange eating style, Sela could only shake her head sadly and cover ex Iona's eyes to prevent her from following suit. On this side, Kongu was still engrossed in sipping the leaky soup, trying to squeeze out every last drop. That's right, you should mix it all up and eat it, your father's reputation will die immediately. Kongu woke up from his drunken stupor and looked thoughtfully at him. It turned out to be the president of Han Un smiling like a blooming flower, a brother he hadn't seen in a long time. Kongu was really upset, what the hell was fate that he happened to meet this name when he didn't want to. Beck Kong Yun seemed friendly and wanted to tell Kongu the good news. Wow, if any good news passes through this guy's mouth, it will all be lost. That's right, he asked Kongu if he was a new recruit to the Red Rose Society? Kongu didn't mind as he ate and replied that yes but it wasn't a complete joining, rather it was a cooperation together. Hearing this, Kong Yun clasped his hands and sincerely hoped that Kongu could join his association. Joining the Han Ul Society, Kong Yun promised to give Kongu 5 billion won and buy him a house, a car and maybe give Kongu more than what he has now. What he said made Sola startled as well. Kong Yun also promised to bring Kongu to the executive position, but Kongu replied that he had great expectations and the things Beak Kong Yun promised were small, in fact nothing at all. These words made Kong Yun startled in the countryside, so he smiled and praised Kongu for being funny, but that wasn't enough to satisfy him. So what conditions are enough? The person who asked was sincere, so it's okay to receive a sincere answer. Currently, Kong Ji Yu has no intention of working under anyone, 
no matter how attractive the conditions are. But Kong Yun is a very patient person. He does not accept Kongu's sarcastic sincere words. Still trying to convince him that if he joined his guild, Kongu would be given a legendary item of equipment for free. Oh, that's a tempting example. It's known that legendary equipment is extremely rare, and can't even be bought with money. It was unlike the equipment of regular players, crafted from the corpses of normal monsters and magic stones. Legendary equipment is crafted from materials, collected from boss monsters from fields of S rank or higher. The most special point is that only the person who wore it for the first time is the only one who can use it because the bond form does not allow a second person to use it together. Additionally, there is the possibility that the device will reject the owner if the connection conditions are not suitable, no matter how hard they try. Such a good item and the ability to optimize all his stats, Kong Ji Yu pondered for a long time. And this made Kong Yun secretly happy, the fish finally wanted to bite. But people who think who this Kong Ji Yu is, are the Demon King's household registration in hell 10,000 years later can easily fall for the dirty tricks of this dark skinned, silver haired guy. It might be a bit sweet, but if it doesn't enhance my magical power, then isn't it a throwaway thing? Thinking so, Kong Ji Yu flatly refused. But Kong Yun still looked as calm as a fly and said that he had guessed his intention. Leave your business card out, tell Kong Ji Yu to think about it. Just call if anything comes up. Before leaving, Kong Yun took a plate of tofu sauce and poured it into Kong Gu's half eaten pot of kimchi soup. Scream with joy. If you like to mix it all up, mix it with more of this for richer flavor. Well, it's true that not everyone with white hair is a Buddha. The appearance of that damn name made him lose his appetite, but it also made S. Iona want to learn bad habits and not even lose interest in eating. Kong Ji Yu then bid farewell to Sela and X Iona and stopped by the government building. In the hallway going into the meeting room, he told Un Jo the story of meeting that damn guy. With such attractive conditions, Kong Ji Yu refused, making Un Jo wonder. He said he didn't want to be anyone's subordinate, making Un Jo confused and said he was really a strange guy. Oh well, even if I don't join the Han Un Guild, I can still fairly and equitably get epic equipment from my contributions while trying to protect other players, right? Suddenly he asked Yoon Jo if she noticed anything dirty from Kong Yun. But Yoon Jo said that she and Kong Yun had only met each other a few times because they were both owners of large associations. Regarding people, everyone can see that he is a type of person with a short-term vision. But what Kong Yun wants to know is about Kong Yun's scandal. Is he so clean that he doesn't have any rumors? Unjo pressed the elevator button, thought for a long time, and finally brought up old news, which was the time Kong Yun was criticized in the world ranker evaluation. In that big race, Kong Yun lost and was eliminated very tragically. The winning ranker is the owner of a mythical weapon known as the I of Suzano, a Japanese named Fujimoto Ryoma. Because Kong Yun lost to a Japanese person, he was criticized by public opinion. Those were all the rumors that Un Jo knew about President Han Un. Kong Yun wondered if he would be affected by refusing that guy, an attack from public opinion for example. He's not the type of person who holds grudges for a long time. That idiot just laughs it off no matter what happens. After talking for a while, the two of them arrived in front of the meeting room. Hua Un came out to welcome them and tell them the good news. While they were investigating the Mia group, they accidentally found an item that had not yet formed a bond. It was an elegant and enchanting black jacket that Hua Wun immediately recognized as genuine. But unfortunately the shirt is not compatible with anyone, even higher ranking people cannot convince it. Kong Yun was now completely immersed in the introduction that this was a black pearl jacket, made from the congealed blood of the Kraken's heart, a legendary class not affiliated with anyone. In addition to the bonus when worn, it also increases all stats by 5 and allows the player to use Kraken's Rage to double their stats for one minute. The two girls clicked their tongues regretfully because they couldn't find anyone with inherent stats. Afraid that Kong Ji Yu wouldn't understand, she was about to turn back to explain but was startled when she saw Kong Gu's strange expression, looking like an owner about to tame a new treasure. Un Zhou realized that perhaps this idiot Kong Yun was a player with inherent stats. According to his growth rate, 
having inherent stats is understandable, but without inherent stats, it would be a very different story. This is truly the pinnacle of all legendary equipment so it cannot be given to the wrong person. Kong Ji Yu slowly walked in front of the cloak and exclaimed Sajang Hero. He was now trembling with joy, thanking team leader Hua Un profusely and promising that he would finally dedicate himself to reporting something to the country, and then continue to devote himself to the work of eradicating demonic sects. If she exchanged the shirt that no one could wear for Kong Gu's help, Hua Un would definitely agree to let him take it right away. Kong Ji Yu was like a new mat and asked stupidly if he just needed to put it on and that's it. His father was the shirt, not the vegetables that needed to be cooked. Just wear it like wearing the Gagoi armor, there's nothing special about it. The moment he put on his cloak, Tom fully understood the meaning of the saying that what is his will be his, and what is not his will be someone else's. As soon as he put it on, it hugged Kong Yun's body tightly. With the addition of the Black Pearl Robe confirmation system, it confirmed that Kong Yun was the owner. At this moment, he clearly felt the sources of magic power coursing throughout his body. Here we are scanning the inherent person's stats to optimize the effects of the Black Pearl Robe. When the inherent power index added 5, Kong Yun felt light and radiant with the light of the Ten Directions of Buddhas making him no different from the enlightened masters on TV. The possession-marking ritual was completed. Seeing that Kong Yun was still bewildered, the red-haired girl asked how the legendary equipment felt. As for the damn thing, he volunteered to ask if he could get ten more. Without scolding a greedy guy like Wu Zhou, Hua Un happily explained that he could only equip five items regardless of rank. If he took any more, their effects would be nullified. Really? Does that mean he still has four more items he can equip? Oh la la, great cat. Looking at Kongu's epileptic appearance, Unjo asked if he liked it. Like it, love it, Kong Ji Yu was as excited as a rookie seeing something delicious for the first time. So do you want to test how strong it is? One second Kong Ji Yu was laughing at me like a butterfly pea flower, the next moment his spring buds had bloomed. Unjo, are you trying to challenge him? Hua Un was also at a loss for words in response to the red hair's determination to challenge her and arrange for them the best training room in Seoul. Unless there was some special impact, no matter how much they fought, they would not be asked to fight. As a provocateur, Un Jo is also gentle. I wonder how much stronger this brat Kong Ji Yu has become. The problem is not in development because considering Kong Gu's level is much lower than Moon Dong Ho's and still easily defeats him. Surely this guy has something special beyond level and stats. I have to take this opportunity to find that special point. Kong Ji Yu knew for sure that there was some hidden meaning in this challenge, but whatever, he also wanted to test the power of this newly acquired outfit and Un Jo was an ideal match. Hua Un suddenly became a referee and announced the start of the match. Kong Ji Yu determined the exact position of the red hair and took the initiative to throw punches, but Un Jo was no match. She nimbly wriggled past his steel punch and then turned around to strike back. Her eyes filled with murderous intent, intending to attack Kong Gu's weak points from behind. Oh, I missed it, my friend, Kong Ji Yu, with his emotional nerves all over his body, immediately caught this dangerous attack. If you've run out of steam, don't blame it on you. Both of them concentrated their energy on one side to punch and the other to block, creating a super mana move. Kong Ji Yu turned on defense mode and immediately neutralized that enormous pressure. It was then realized that the amount of damage that Un Zhou dealt did not exceed the necessary level. He guessed that maybe she wanted to start with a close battle first. No punches or kicks like this, it's boring, just follow this order until the match ends. Kong Ji Yu suddenly changed from a defensive position to a direct attack, causing Un Zhou to almost have to spend money to straighten her teeth. Kong Gu's punch just grazed Un Zhou's mouth, then he reached up and grabbed the baseball cap. Ah, are you taking him too lightly? No one is going to punch and kick wearing a hat to block their vision. As soon as the hat was stolen by Kong Yun, Un Zhou mercilessly punched it. He intended to just play around but successfully activated her fighting spirit. Un Zhou wants to kill him in this matter, wants to take advantage of the opportunity to play him to death. That's right, this time, I'm going to have a hard-hitting match with you, 
because you're not a normal player to give in to. Endure. As soon as the sentence ended, Un Jo performed a bloodthirsty chain dance clearly past Kong Ji Yu. Next, she danced consecutive chains of chains, weaving countless rings that flew in the air directly into the gaps and wrapped around him. 1 2 3 I dodged. 3 2 1 I dodged. After every time Kong Hun dodged the attack, the chain in Un Jo's hand hit straight into the wall, causing sand and rocks to fly everywhere. Kong Ji Yu deployed his sky wings to fly away successfully avoiding that blinding dust storm. To respond to the tigress's fury, Kong Ji Yu tried to activate the Kraken's special ability with a demonic force index of plus 5, repelling the power that Un Jo was overwhelming, causing her to along with the chains flying somersaults to the side, witnessing the fierce fighting of domestic chickens. Hua Un spoke up to remind the government's supplies that they were about to become unsustainable, but damn it, Un Zhou could no longer hear anything in her ears and continuously whipped the chain at Kong Ji Yu. Kong Ji Yu turned around and used his separation ability combined with his sky wings to soar high, dodging all of Un Zhou's attacks, and of course those attacks would bounce straight into the surrounding million dollar wall. Gradually revealing sand, sand, cement and reinforced concrete, on this side Un Zhou rotated the red and black blood, creating a whirlwind that hit Kong Ji Yu. When attacked, he dodged, he blocked, he wriggled through the gaps, gathered all his explosive power and rushed straight at Un Zhou, creating a super huge explosion, breaking all the bloodthirsty chains. Taking advantage of the victory, Kong Ji Yu continued to use his supersonic power to emit a frequency that pierced the eardrum and shook the heart, causing both Hua Un and Un Zhou to hug their ears. He knew right now was a good opportunity. Best. Then he unleashed the power of heaven combined with the power of demon destruction to directly attack Un Zhou. Under such intense pressure, Un Zhou could no longer avoid it and had to switch to defense mode. The bloodthirsty chain now launched by Un Zhou was not to attack but to create a shield for herself. But Kong Ji Yu with the charisma of being the master of the game did not like this. He used energy to press Un Zhou's defense and then defeated it with a sky-destroying move? Oh well. Hua Un by my side could only chant Amen and wish Yun Zhou peace. At the end of the battle, each line of bloodthirsty chains was broken into pieces and fell with a loud thud, followed by Yun Zhou, who also exhausted all her strength, sat down on the cold ground and cursed. Oh, Kong Ji Yu, you damn monster, and behind them, the wall of the best gym in Seoul had cracked into large pieces as if a monster had just crawled through it. The gym was now deserted like a battlefield, but both of them were devastated. Kong Ji Yu receives a notification that the Kraken's rage time has expired and can be used again after two hours. Wow, this shirt is truly amazing. No wonder everyone is obsessed with legendary grade items. He couldn't believe he was able to defeat Yun Zhou in such a moment. Sitting on the ground breathing heavily, angry and cursing at him, she was sure that she had just fought a monster not a human. Kongu's nose was very sore but still restrained himself from blaming it all on having legendary level equipment. Kong Ji Yu raised his hand to support Un Zhou, pretending to draw a stupid smile. As strong as he is, there's nothing better than being a teammate, not an enemy. The most silent person, Hua Un, now screamed in anger. Do you two know how expensive this gym is? Millions of dollars of taxpayers' money have been poured into it? Well, I don't know anything. When Kong Ji Yu and Un Zhou heard about the million dollar bill, they immediately pretended to be stupid, scratching their heads, wanting to explain something, but couldn't get any more words out. Over here, Hua Un still keeps scolding and hurling insults at the two boys, who are only as strong as buffaloes but don't know how high the sky is and how thick the earth is. Even if they compete, they will have to fight hard. There's no room where they can borrow a practice room and destroy it like a deserted house. Host substance. It's great now that the gym is banned, so why the hell are kids using it? Over here, Hua Un is having a headache because she doesn't know how to write a program with the leader, and she's also having a headache because the two brats Kong Ji Yu and Un Zhou were jokingly blaming each other. Wouldn't it be better if the two of you could negotiate with each other during the sabotage? A poor bastard like Kong Ji Yu is busy calculating how much debt he has to bear. 
As for Eun Jo, she kept blaming her for not finding a dungeon to kick and punch. Things have come to this point and the ant's regrets won't solve anything. Kong Ji Yu wants to sell real ghost stones in the giant orge to pay for the repair fee, but doing so will probably take a lot of time. Why don't we fight some high-level monsters to pick up legendary level equipment or other rare items to sell for more money? The whole group was stunned when they heard Kong Ji Yu suggest hunting the monster El Cuero, the boss of Dungeon S. The idea of solving the problem sounded quite convincing, but Eun Jo asked Kong Ji Yu if he knew that monster. Anyone who wants to hunt will hunt. El Cuero, the boss monster that lives in the lake at Suwan's S Gate, has never been captured by any player before. The biggest problem is that this monster lives in water, so melee attacks are almost impossible to reach it. In addition, it also has extremely high resistance to magic, and it is in water, so long-range attacks are difficult to reach. That is the reason why people are afraid when it comes to conquering this monster. Eun Jo immediately discussed that conquering the monster El Cuero is difficult, more importantly, defeating it is not necessarily a legendary level item. But no one knows in advance that the ant's calculation will lead to a legendary level item. If not, there will be other things that require you to hunt such a powerful boss. Kangu smiled, he said he needed to hunt that one to see if it was related to the level restriction of his stage 6 awakening. This is also not personal because when players level up, everyone will face two huge obstacles. That is to put in absolute effort at level 59 and unlock absolute talent at level 89. The most common way for a player to overcome this limit is to defeat a boss that is stronger than his limit. Listening to Kangu's gossip, it seems reasonable. Eun Jo has actually had her absolute talent stagnant for a while, so instead of killing giant ogres every day, it might be effective to take a risk at once. But, how the hell did a level 89 guy lose at the hands of this level 58 brat? It's really disgusting. Well, the important thing is that I also benefit. Eun Jo decided to help Kangu, but by the way, even if he was as strong as a monster, the two combined wouldn't be able to defeat him. Speaking of this, Kangu's eyes sparkled like car headlights, looking at the respected Captain Hua Eun. How can a monster battle plan be complete without a close combat player like the captain? Hua Eun clearly understood that so she agreed to participate in the monster hunt this time because it was mostly her fault for lending the gym that caused the incident. Eun Jo's eyes sparkled and thanked her good friend, then turned around and cursed Kangu, the lord of blame, destroying the room of blaming others. Seeing that the two were about to curse each other again, Hua Eun asked how great Kangu's plan to San El Cuero was that it needed a close combat profession. For the time being, he's thinking about a three-person monster hunting team here plus X Iona. But four is not enough, he wants another close combatant like Hua Eun. At first, the candidate he was looking for was Si Hun, but his level was still too low. I have someone who is quite good. Hua Eun spoke up and said that she knew someone with close combat experience and the person introduced by team leader Hua Jiang must have had 10 points of prestige. The group dispersed immediately, and Kangu immediately arrived at the S gate. He wanted to warm up so he chose an ogre as a punching bag to practice snatching first. As a reward, Kangu unleashed his power and joined forces with the support of X Iona to instantly kill the monster. The system notifies that Kangu has leveled up again, now he has promoted to level 59 and as predicted, the leveling progress is limited. All experience gained from now on will be stored, he must quickly remove the restriction for all experience to increase. So Demon King Kangu is just like any other normal player, in fact he expected his team to be very different. It turned out that the king's rules were inferior to the village's rules. At this moment, Eun Jo and Hua Eun had just arrived and witnessed Kangu defeating the ogre monster. They were worried about whether he still had the strength to fight monsters, but who was this Kangu? Don't worry anymore and use it. Hua Eun introduced the lucky invitee as her friend Ji Yu Hinmo, captain of Hua Jiang team number two. Kangu happily shook hands and introduced himself, secretly happy. The captain of Hua Jiang team number two must be as strong as Hua. It's Eun. In this appearance, he will probably use dual swords, if so, then his plan seems to have no flaws. As soon as Ji Yu Hinmo arrived, 
he saw Kangu defeating an ogre and kept praising him for being so good, even planning to fight monsters today. But I wonder why Kangu brought the child to fight monsters in such a dangerous place? Kangu didn't know where to explain, just briefly said it was his summoned monster. The curious Jiyu Hinmo kept wondering how this tiny Siona could be a summoned monster, making Kangu so upset. Wa Hoon had to speak up to calm the other captain down. Now all she needs to know is that this young man is as strong as Woon Jo. Jiyu Hinmo listened and his ears were filled with tears. Why the fuck was that? How can someone who just became a player two months ago be compared to Woon Jo? Not only that, but he was still talking very closely with the captain of his team too. Hinmo couldn't bear it anymore and pulled Kangu aside to whisper just hoping to get an answer to see if he had any intention of rubbing the girl's nose.